Assalamualaikum and very good day to everyone. My name is Nofarhana Muhammad Noor from I Promise You Atim Puja Alam. And today I'm going to share about my research entitled Association of Antitopolymorphism and Antituberculosis Induced Hepatotoxicity in a Case Control Study. Tuberculosis is caused by Mycobacterium tuberculosis complex. It can spread from a person to another through droplet during sneezing and coughing. TB usually occurs in lungs, but it can also occur in other organs. According to Global TB Report by WHO in 2019, 10 million of people worldwide fell ill with TB and 1.4 million of them died from TB. And from these 10 million of people, 44% of cases was reported from Southeast Asian country. And from these 44%, 0.58% of it come from Asia. Even though Malaysia was not listed as high TB burden country, we should be worried about this number as we had a influx of foreign workers from our neighbour country like Indonesia and Thailand, which is a high TB burden country. First line TB treatment consists of a combination of four drugs, which is etambutol, isoniazide, lymphoficin and parisinamide. And because it was given as a combination, anti-TB is associated with many adverse effects and among it is nausea, vomiting, hyperuricemia, autotoxicity, and hepatotoxicity. And all of these adverse effects can affect patient compliance, and this can lead to treatment relapse and treatment failure, and eventually can lead to the emergence of drug-resistant TB. Among all of these adverse effects, this study will focus on factors that actually increase the susceptibility of an individual to hepatotoxicity which is caused by the three drugs in the first-line TB treatment. In Malaysia, the prevalence of anti-TB-induced hepatotoxicity occur between 7 to 10 percent. And among the factors that can increase the risk of hepatotoxicity, one of it is NAT2 polymorphism. We look into NAT2 gene because NAT2 enzyme involved in the metabolism of isoniazide and in slow acetylators, there is accumulation of hepatotoxin that lead to the liver injury. This is some of the study that have been done. In Brazil, 63% of patients that develop hepatotoxicity is a slow acetylators. Risk of having NTTB induced hepatotoxicity was significantly higher in slow acetylators compared to rapid acetylators among Korean and Taiwanese. In Southeast Asian region, this has been studied in Indonesia, Singapore, and Thailand. This study found out that in group of patients that develop anti-TB-induced hepatotoxicity, 70% of them is slow acetylators. And slow acetylators was significant risk factor for susceptibility to anti-TB-induced hepatotoxicity. However, there is still lack of data from Malaysia. So, our study aimed to investigate the association of NAT2 polymorphism with antituberculosis induced hepatotoxicity among patients in Malaysia. This study was approved by ethic committees from Ministry of Health of Malaysia and from UITM. As for the subject recruitment, all subjects were recruited from Selayang Hospital and Respiratory Medicine Institute which is a tertiary hospital that received TB cases in Klang Valley. 23 TB patients with anti-TB induced hepatotoxicity were grouped together under cases group, while 42 TB patients who did not develop anti-TB induced hepatotoxicity were grouped together under control groups. Adult patients aged more than 80, 8, uh, 18 years old treated for active pulmonary TB and reserved receive uh, anti-tuberculosis treatment were included in the study. And patients with abnormal liver function tests before anti-TB treatment or having clinical symptoms related to hepatotoxicity such as nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, jaundice were excluded from the study. Patient who is having underlying liver disease, alcoholic liver disease or is a habitual alcoholic drinker were also excluded. Patients with a history of taking traditional medications or herb medication, and patients that develop defaulting treatment and follow up, and patients that is not compliant to the anti TB were also excluded. Anti TB induced hepatotoxicity was defined as having a risk of 
ALT or ASD, three times upper limit normal with symptoms of hepatotoxicity, or five times upper limit normal without any symptoms. And after patients given their consent, five mil of blood were withdrawn. DNA was extracted manually using salting out method, and we developed a primer set to amplify the N82 gene to get uh, 1338 best pair amplicon through a polymerase gene reaction. PCR product was then uh, purified using GeneNet Bio PCR purification kit, and the purified sample was sent for Sanger sequencing. All studies need were screened using NovoSNIT software, and haplotype were inferred using FAST software. And finally, all data were analyzed using SPSS. This is the pictograph of our amplified N82 gene, uh, N82 region. A total of seven SNPs were studied, and the one in the red box is the slow allele. In the absence of all SNPs, a person will be labeled as N82 star 4 and is a fast escalators. If a person carries two fast allele, there are fast escalators. If they carry two slow allele, they are slow escalators. And if they carry one fast allele and one slow allele, they are intermediate escalators. Now we come to the finding of our study. Our subject averagely aged 38 years old. Female make up the majority of cases group, while male make up the majority of control groups. Majority of subjects in both groups is uh, Malay, having diabetes mellitus, and was diagnosed with pulmonary TB. Median in days for the subject to develop hepatotoxicity is 18 days, and there is no difference in terms of baseline liver function tests in both groups. It was reported previously that female aged more than 35 years old, ethnicity and extrapulmonary TB uh, is associated with NTTB induced hepatotoxicity. However, our study find that this variable is not significantly different between the groups. This is the allele and genotype distribution across the group. The odd ratio was calculated for allele frequency. Even though there is a different distribution between the groups, statistically, there is no significant difference between groups for all allele. However, NAT2 star 13 has been labeled as a fast allele and this assignment has been controversial. In our study, the TT genotype is associated with increased risk of NTTB induced hepatotoxicity instead of the CC genotype. This finding is also similar as what been reported by Pusolo et al. and Un et al. This is the haplotype distribution across the group. In total, we found 8 haplotypes in our population, except for haplotype C GCT CGAG in N82 star 4. Other haplotype did not show any significant difference between cases and control groups. We can see that haplotype GCT CGAG of N82 star 4 is having an odd ratio of 0 0.36 with 95% confidence interval of 0 0.1 to 0 0.9, indicating the less risk of developing NTTV induced hepatotoxicity. This finding is also supported by many studies, and some of it is Hibuchi et al., Gupta et al., and Watanapo Kayakit et al. This is the phenotype distribution between cases and controls. 78% of cases and 45% of controls are slow escalators, and we can see that there's a significant association between cases and control for intermediate and slow escalators. Our study found that N82 slow acetylators is significantly associated with NTTB induced hepatotoxicity with an odd ratio of 4.36, and this finding also supported by many studies, and some of it is by Bose et al. in Indian population, Chan et al. in mixed ethnicity Singaporean, and by Yuli, Wul Yuli Wulandari et al. in Indonesian population. With that, we conclude that N82 slow escalators may be, may be a risk factor for NTTB induced hepatotoxicity among patients in Malaysia. 
Although some NAT2 haplotype and genotype show a trend towards susceptibility to an NTTV-induced hepatotoxicity, the result was not statistically significant. We believe with increased sample size, this haplotype and genotype may demonstrate significant association with NTTV-induced hepatotoxicity. We would like to thank Ministry of Higher Education of Malaysia for the research grant. I promise for providing the facility for laboratory works. Selayan Hospital and Institute of Respiratory Medicine as a study site and all TB patients that has participated in this study. And this is my references. And with that, I'd like to thank you all for spending your precious time with me. Thank you.